Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to take a look at the relational operators and basic decision structures that are available to us in Java. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, when we talk about relational operators, we're talking about how we can compare how things are related to each other. So what this means is we're going to be talking about, you know, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, not equal to, and uh, equals, right? So uh, you can check for equality, or you can check if something comes before the other. So for example, A less than B. This is true if A comes before B. So, you know, if A was five and B was seven, then this would be true because five comes before uh, seven. We can also check for equality, you know, is A equal to B? And that would be true if um, A was five and B was five, right? Those are equal, that would be true. If we had an A that was five and a B that was six, well, then that would be false because you know, five is not uh, equal to six. But if we wanted to ask if A was not equal to B, then that would be true if A and B were different. So, you know, in this case, five not equal six is in fact um, true. Okay, so, you know, this is just like, you know, what you've seen in other programming languages like um, C, C++, Python, etc. Now, these are going to help us when we deal with decision structures or repetition structures. So things like if, if else, if else, if are some fundamental decision structures that we have in Java. And these are going to behave just like, you know, you have in other programming languages okay and then they'll also be useful for helping us with loops so like while loops do while loops and uh, for loops okay but in this video we're just going to take a look at if if else and if else if so let us go ahead and see how these work so what you're going to have is you're going to have this keyword if and then you're gonna have parentheses and you're gonna have a test expression. So when you have something like A equals equals B, that is a test expression, it's testing something. So we can say, for example, if A is greater than or equal to B, okay? So if that's true, if that test expression evaluates to true, then we're gonna execute the following block. Otherwise, we'll skip it, right? So this is the basic if statement. So in this case, you're going to have if true, if the test expression is true, do something. Otherwise, don't do anything. Okay, so let's see how this could work. So let's create a scanner object. So that way we can read some input from the user. And then we'll ask the user to enter a couple numbers, right? Um, and then based on what they enter, we'll print something or not with an if statement, right? So let's do that. So we'll do system.out and um, dot print, and we'll say something like enter your age, okay? And then we will read in what the user is going to respond with. So we'll do something like um, int age equals input dot next int. And so then we'll say, well, if their age is greater than or equal to 21, then we will say something like, um, you know, system.out.println, you are legal drinking age. Okay, something like that. Okay, otherwise, we won't say that at all. Um, and then at the very end of our program, we'll say goodbye. Goodbye, just so we can show that we got past this if this is false. So now if I enter in 20, a value that's 21 or above, an integer that's bigger than that, then this is going to evaluate true. And then we will see you are legal drinking age and then we'll see goodbye. Now, if I enter in something that's less than 21, let's say that I enter 20, well, 20 is not greater than or equal to 21, so this will be false, and so this entire following block will get skipped. So let's test that, and we'll see it work. You know, it's just basic decision structures, and again, if you've programmed other languages, then you know how this works. If not, if this is your first time, then that's fine too. So we're gonna enter our age, we'll say 23, and you can see in the output, you are legal drinking age, right? Because 23 is greater than or equal to 21. That's true. So we print out the contents of the block and then we continue on with the rest of the program. Now, if I had enter something that was less than 21, so let's say I did um, 18, right? We can see that this block got skipped because 18 is not greater than or equal to 21. Right, so that is how the basic um, if works. Now, let's take a look at the if 
else statement. So this, this first example, this basic if, it's if true, do A. Otherwise, don't do anything, right? But with an if else, then we're going to do A or B. So with if else, we could say if else. If true, do A. Otherwise, do B, right? So you've got two options. One or the other is definitely going to happen. So here we have if age greater than or equal to 21, we'll print out, you know, your legal drinking age. That's option A. Otherwise, we'll print out um, you are not legal drinking age, right? And so this here is our B option. So one of these two things is definitely going to happen. Okay, it's either or, one or the other. You've got two options, all right? It's not just do A or don't do A, it's do A or B. There will be an A or a B. So if I enter my age, just like before, I did 22, 22 is greater than or equal to 21. So you can see you are legal drinking age. So option A happened and option B got skipped. It's one or the other. Now, if I come in here and I type in uh, my age being 17, well, then you're gonna see that you are not legal drinking age. Why? Because this test expression evaluated to false. 17 is not greater than or equal to 21. That is false. So option A got skipped and then option B happened and then we continued with the rest of our program and said goodbye, right? So it's just that simple. It's one or the other, it's either or. If true this, otherwise that. Now let's take a look at the other option we have for if statements, and that is the if else if, okay? And this is a structure that allows you to check through a bunch of options. So it could be A or B or C or D or E, right? Depending on how many options that you have, okay? So let's take a look here. So let's say, enter your age. Maybe we'll say, if your age is greater than or equal to 21, you are legal drinking age, else, if your age is greater than or equal to 18, then what we'll do is we will say um, you are uh, legal to vote. You are eligible to vote, right? You're old enough to vote. So that's going to be our option B, okay? And then here we can have this else, this trailing else, where if neither of these is true, then this will always execute, right? So we'll just say you are neither. So you are neither. So this is our option C. So it's going to be A, B, or C. One of these three things will happen. So if I type in uh, 25 for my age, then it's going to print out this right here, option A. You are legal drinking age. Uh, this will get skipped. And then this will get skipped. And then we'll print goodbye. So let's see that. Okay. So I type in my 25 down here. And you can see you are legal drinking age and then goodbye, right? So this was true, everything else got skipped, and then we finished the program. Now, if I were to type in, say, 19, okay, then this test happens first, and since 19 is not greater than or equal to 21, then option A, this block A here gets skipped, and then we go down to the next test. And so if I typed in 19, well, in this case, 19 is greater than or equal to 18, that's true. So then block B here will execute, and then block seal gets skipped, and then we'll see goodbye. Now, if I type something like 17, then this is false, and this block gets skipped, but this is also false, and this block gets skipped, and so then we end up in else down here, in our block C, which says you are neither. So let's try the uh, 19, and that gives us the you are eligible to vote, just as we said. Now let's try 17, right? So if you're 17, then both those previous tests fail, right? This was this was false, this was false, and so we kick down in here. So it says you are neither. Now this last else part is optional. You don't have to have it. So if that's the case and we entered 17, well then both these first tests are gonna end up false. So both block A and B will get skipped and then we'll just continue with the program and say goodbye, right? So if I enter 17 this time, you know, both block A and B got skipped. Okay, so that's how that works. Now, we can make more complex decisions here. We can have much more complex test expressions. And the way we can do that is by using logical operators. So we can have and, we can have or, and we can have 
not. So what that does is if we have a test expression A and a test expression B, if both of those are true, then the whole thing evaluates are true. Otherwise it's false. Now we can have A or B. So if the A test expression is true or the B test expression is true, then the whole thing is true. So the only time it's not true is if both A and B are false. So false and false equals false. Otherwise, you're going to have true. Otherwise, everything is true. And then for the and, true and true is true. Otherwise, everything is false. And then you've got your logical not, right? And so if you say not A, then that just flips the truth value. So if A was true, then not A is false. Okay, that's how that works. That's all there is to it. So let's uh, take a look at an example of that. So we could say something like, oh, if your age is greater than or equal to 18 and your age is less than or equal to 21. If both those conditions are true, you could say something like system.out.println. You know, you can only vote and not drink something like that okay so this should be less than 21. so what this is saying is if if both of these things are true if you are greater than or equal to 18 years old and you are less than 21 you can vote but you can't drink right so let's test that out so if i type in um 20 then it's going to tell me that you can only vote and not drink why because 20 is both greater than or equal to 18 and less than 21. So both of these are true. Both of those have to be true in order for this block to execute. Now, what happens if I was to type in um, 22? Okay, well then that would be false, right? So you see that it doesn't, that block doesn't execute. Why? Because when I do 22, it's true that my age is greater than or equal to 18, but it's false that my age is less than 21 my age is 22. So in this case, only one test expression is false, makes the entire thing false. Okay, so now let's take a look at what or could look like. So you might do something like, you know, if your age is, you know, less than or equal to zero, or your age is greater than, you know, 200, say, you know, we might say something like, there is no way, there is no way that you exist. Right? Because nobody's who's alive is older than 200. And if you're less than zero years old, then you know, you're you you're not born yet. You're, there's no way that you exist or your age is greater than 200. And so we can test that, right? So if we do something like uh, 220, then that thing is going to evaluate the true. The whole thing is going to evaluate the true. Because you only need one of these to be true for the entire thing to be true, right? So if I enter 220, it's false that 220 is less than or equal to zero, but it's true that the uh, age, that 220 is greater than 200. So that's totally true, right? Another example is if I put in a number, like say negative one. So there's no way you can be negative one years old. That doesn't make any sense. So um, if I say that my age is negative one, well then this is true because negative one is less than or equal to zero, but this is false here. Negative one is not greater than 200, but you only need one of these to be true for the entire thing to be true. So that's why we see there is no way that you exist. Now, you know, what if we put a number that was, that made both of those false? So what would be one of those numbers? Like say 12, okay? If I enter my age of 12, then we just say, you know, the goodbye, because it's false that 12 is less than or equal to zero. And it's also false that 12 is greater than 200. So that false and false, you know, false or false makes this whole thing false. So this block never executes. And so we execute our goodbye, right? It's just, it's just that easy. So final thing we'll take a look at is um, what not does. And all not does is change the truth value to the opposite, it flips it. So let's say, you know, we were gonna say, if your age is greater than or equal to uh, 21, right? If you do that, then you can drink, right? But what we want to do is we want to change this. We want to say if not your age is greater than or equal to 21. So what we'll do is we'll put this little not out here and we'll put 
for syntactical reasons, this is a tactical requirement. We've got to put parentheses around this. So what this is saying is, if your age is not greater than or equal to 21, right? So it changes the question just a little bit. We can say system.out.println, you're not old enough to drink. So you're not old enough to drink. So we're saying if you're not 21 or older, then you're not old enough. So if I was to put in 18, okay, how's this gonna play out? Well, age is 18. It is false that 18 is greater than or equal to 21, right? So that's false, but the not flips it. So this whole thing turns out to be true. So not false is true. So that would make this test expression value with true and we would enter this block and execute it. So if we do that, if we enter in 18, you're gonna see that it says, you know, you are not old enough uh, to drink, right? But if I was to put in 23 and hit enter, well then this right here, 23 is greater than or equal to 21, that's true. But the not flips it to false. So in that case, this gets skipped and we just go right on to the goodbye. Now, of course you can combine this in all kinds of different ways, right? So we could do an else if here and then have a test expression and then we could have another else down here, a little trailing else. So we might do something like if age is greater than uh, zero and less than or equal to 24 or something, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you need, um, you can do, right? So um, then you put whatever code you need to execute in here as a result of that test condition. And then whatever code you need to execute here, uh, if neither of these test expressions um, evaluated to true. Okay, so that's everything that I wanna cover in this video. So now you know how the basics of the if works in Java. We've got the if, we've got the if else, we've got the if else if, and we also took a look at the relational operators, and we also looked at and saw examples of the logic operators as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have any questions, feel free to send me an email through Canvas or stop by my Zoom office hours. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.